Welcome back to Let's Play Darkest Dungeon. I'm your host, Time Pants, and today we are going to be headed to the Warrens. We're going to be trying to get that bad taste out of our mouths and hopefully get back on a winning track here. Let's see. We will be taking we will be taking this crew here. We're going to have Cornelius, T-Bone, Pippin, and Fourneau. And we're going to be venturing in the light. Possibly it might have something to do with the fact that I feel like I got completely humiliated last time and I kind of want to do something about it. And winning is probably the best thing that I can do to feel better right now. Um, a little food for thought. I have heard a quote that I think is very applicable. The difference between theory and practice is that in theory, things will work out the same in practice, and in practice, things never go the way they should in theory. My old roommate used to say that, and he was an asshole, but he was also right. Um, so, yeah, let's... I, I feel like that last group that we took should have been very strong. Well, let me let me take that back. Should have been well equipped. But in actuality, they very much were were not. They were pretty pretty sorely under equipped to handle the situation. Um, let's see, this is how we do it. Uh, blah, 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 blah. On you Dodge on you. Let's see. Planned takedown, or... I don't think we have much else. This would be nice, but... Aha! Release the hound. Yeah, the, the last group that we took out, I felt like they should have been okay. Like, I felt like they, they shouldn't have been as badly overwhelmed as they were. Um... Because, I mean, they had a little bit of everything, right? They had... They had... You know, they had stuns. They had lots of stuns. They had lots of mobility. They had the ability to dodge. You know, they had... Um, they had the ability to, like... To apply bleed and dots. Really, the only thing that was missing was the damage, and I guess that was a bridge too far. Um, and I, I, I think that actually goes to show how important damage is still in this game. Um, you know, obviously, uh, we had a couple of sore spots. Besides that, I mean, nobody other than our, um, yeah, other than our, um, our Crusader was really all that hardy, so it's pretty easy to see why we would get perfect. I didn't even know that you could move double white enemies. So, yeah, it's, it's pretty easy to see why we would get beaten up like that if, yeah, if, if, Enemies, particularly in the wield, have, you know, something like um, the ability to uh, weather a lot of damage on account of protection. Like, it's, it's kind of easy to see why we would get overwhelmed and, and beat it, uh, beaten up like that. That said, I mean, you know, we have the advantage of hindsight here, but that said, I am still a little bit... 102 dodge those buffs. Holy shit. I am still a little bit surprised at how poorly that went. Like, man, <laughs> we got roughed up. So, we're just gonna, we're gonna try and move past it. I don't think I will be raising another leper until the Lord class comes out, because... It's going to be a long, fuck, it's going to be a long, hard road back to, back to, to champion level with, um, with a leper. 
especially if that's the only class that I'm going to be raising. So, man, you know, that that was a blow. I'm not going to lie. Let's see who has more health. I guess you are equipped for this. All right. It's going to be a long, hard road, and really what that loss represents more than anything is time. It's going to be a big, big time investment to, to get back to where we were. But let's, let's, not, let's not start feeling defeated and sorry for ourselves just yet. We still do have a very fun class that we can, we can enjoy and spend time with. I think we start working on you. And, you know, some people have have asked me, you know, what do you think of the Houndmaster? I, I think I've been pretty clear that I think the Houndmaster is a really good class. But, I mean, for some people, and this is, this is understandable, for some people, the damage is just too bad. It is, it is too much to try and compensate for. It's just, oh no, the fits. You know what comes after that is the tantrums. Boo! Boo! Get off the stage, time pants. Uh, no, I I think the... Um, I do think the Houndmaster is a good class. And if you are only looking at the damage, it is an entirely valid perspective that you would think that, yeah, the Houndmaster is a bad class. And why would you ever... Uh, put the Houndmaster in your party when you could have something like, I don't know, a Hellion. And, I mean, come on. Hellion's really good. But, you can't... The thing is, when you're assessing... When you're assessing a non-combat class, such as the Bounty Hunter, it's always going to look bad if you just look at the damage. It's always going to look bad. But, I mean, here's the thing. What if you looked at... I don't know. The... Okay, what if you looked at the... Um, what, am I, what am I trying to say here? What if you looked at the Plague Doctor as a healing class instead of as a support class? What if you, you compared the Plague Doctor to something like the Vestal? Well, Christ, that's... A horrible comparison. What a terrible, what a terrible healing class. The Plague Doctor, three healing around at level six. That's really bad. I mean, with a Vestal, you can get like what, like six to eight healing, seventy-eight eight healing for a single target. I mean, you can do the Plague Doctor's healing across the whole party. So, it sounds like, using that comparison, well, gosh, who would ever use a Plague Doctor? But the thing is, you have to look at the class. You can't just look at it in a vacuum. You have to assess it entirely on... Actually, let's try this. You have to assess it entirely on... Of course I should have dodged on the marked target, you idiot. Um, so yeah, of, of course, you you can't just look at everything in a vacuum. You have to consider the entire purpose of the class, the entire design of the class. And the design of the Houndmaster is strictly that of a damage reduction class. You are trying to reduce the amount of damage that a single single target takes, like right there. And had I, had I acted properly in the previous round, and had my, had my Houndmaster dodge on the appropriate target, I would have avoided 27 damage. Like, think about that. Can the Vestal heal 27 damage in a single round? No. No class can do that. So, if you look at... You look at the Houndmaster like that, not as a class that 
is terrible in combat, but as a class that can reduce the amount of damage that you take. The, the Houndmaster, as weird as this sounds, has almost infinite upside because there's no class in the game that can reduce damage as much as the Houndmaster. The Houndmaster can reduce damage from four attackers to zero in a single in a sing, with a single action. So I mean if you think about it, that's like what? That could be a hundred damage. You know, as a sequence of unlucky crits. Yeah, a sequence of unlucky crits could easily run a hundred damage. Easily. I mean, remember when we fought the Formless Flesh the first time, the champion Formless Flesh. We got fucked up. And if we had a class that could have completely reduced that damage all the way down to zero, oh my god. We wouldn't have lost we wouldn't have lost two characters like that. We we very well might have been able to survive the battle. Because we did get I don't think I'm exaggerating here. We did get hit for about 100 damage in that round. If we had somebody who could mark themselves, and I believe we did, if we had somebody who could mark themselves and then um, and then throw a dodge on them, we could have easily eliminated 50 gripping in the guts. Ew. Um, griping. Griping in the guts. Uh, we could have easily uh, reduced that figure uh, tremendously. So, yeah, that's that's where I stand on. Hmm. Yeah, that's where I stand on the uh, the Houndmaster. It is a class that has enormous, potentially infinite upside because of how much damage can be mitigated in a single round. No other class is able to do that. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, I, I've written a book about it just now, but I, I really, I truly believe in the power of this class. I really think it has the ability to be one of the strongest, most effective classes if used properly. Um, and I do think that this is the proper use of it. If you have the ability, if he has the ability to take an enemy out using his uh, Hound's Rush, fine, great. You should, um, you should absolutely do that. But if, yeah, if you are, yeah, if if it's a standard turn and there are no enemies that are anywhere near death, then yeah, you should. You should just uh, use the Houndmaster as he's intended. Uh, select a target. Wow, we are only 13 minutes in. We're going to do another. Um, yeah, we're going to do another. Uh, probably not with Pippin, and probably not with Forneau, but we will. Ooh, this is a little bit bad. All right. I hope our vestal comes back. Huh. Ah. Okay. Bose is back. All right. For now, we're gonna just take your stuff off right now. There you go. There you go. And Bose. Boom. And boom. And T-Bone. Oh my goodness. I can't believe I forgot your plus experience trinket. Okay. And Pippin, you are in sorry shape. Let's take this off. Throw it on Hoat. Two bows, you're coming with us. Ooh, our ranks are really shrinking here. And Pippin. Um, sorry, <laughs> sorry. This, uh, this won't take long. Let's see. Get to the sanitary... No. Get to the abbey. 
prey. All right, quickly check the wagon here. Nothing really stands out. That's decent. That's not bad. Um, but I think Dodge is clearly... Only long and short, huh? Well, let's do it. Um, I think that Dodge is now clearly the better stat. For a while there, it was looking like protection um, was the best defensive stat. I no longer think that. Um, and I don't know how... Oops. I don't know how anybody possibly could think that uh, protection is a better stat now. On enemies, protection's amazing. Protection's really, really good on uh, enemy monsters. But, yeah, for uh, for standard player use, no. No, no, no. Um, yeah, I, I don't think that it's very good at all. We are going to pack a lot of food because we need to get some stress relief because we're heading right back out. And we're going to over-prepare uh, simply because we are heading back out into the dungeon um, straight away. So, uh, this is, is this cowardly? Yes, it is. It's very, extremely, excruciatingly cowardly. But, uh, yeah, we kind of need to rush to get some stress relief here. Okay. Um, blah, 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 blah. Let's get this off. Get this off. I really only gave him one, huh? Alright, that's probably fine. Okay. Uh, firewood. Huddled together. Alright, so let us see here. Instruction on you. Weapons practice. Release the hound. Bless. This is perfect. Holy shit. Awesome. Alright. Rest. Pray for no ambush. Wonderful. And let's get back out there. Honestly, I'm kind of starting to think that using a single trinket... Like, this is going to totally look like me trying to cover up for a mistake, but I'm starting to think that using only a single trinket is actually viable for some classes. Simply because, like, look at... Can he bleed? No, okay. Yeah, because something like the... Yeah, something like the Grave Robber only has one really good damage trinket. So, yeah, being able to... Let's see... Yeah, so being able to uh, take, uh, yeah, being able to, to get the damage bonus and then not having to worry about anything, uh, taking any penalties or anything like that, I think is, is a pretty smart play. I think we just dodge on you. I know this will screw over his repost, but honestly, I kind of like the idea. Um, all right, let's see. Can we get a rampart? Do we even want it? We're not going to be able to hit the back rank, are we? It's going to be hard. Okay, so that's kind of a sore spot for this. All right, we're going to have to swap out poison darts and thrown dagger, I think. Okay, no problem just thinking it through. Usually I take a little bit more time to get prepared for a dungeon, but um, since we, we rushed right back out, I, I, didn't, uh, I didn't really think through uh, things all that well. Obviously I don't always think things through that well anyway, but can we please get a kill? No, we cannot. Please? Wonderful. All right. And some stress relief, please. No. Oh, that sucks. 
All right, so let's see. We are fine, and I don't think we need the food here. So let's see. Room battles. One here, and one here. So boom, boom. And then maybe we can go around this way. We'll see. Um, yeah, looking fine. I am really looking forward to the time when our our Houndmaster can pair with a Crusader rather than a uh, rather than a man at arms. Like I don't think it's a great play to um, you know, to to have the man at arms. Um, you know, using a very weak attack like um, like re his repost or his his retribution. Um, Without, uh, yeah, without being able to get the repost as kind of a backup. Stress relief, please? No, okay. Um, hmm, what am I thinking? I think he's gonna have to stress heal himself. She needs thrown dagger, that's gonna give her some reach into the back row. And we're fine. We are fine no more encounters uh, until the room, so torch up, and let's go. Alright, oh, by the way, in one of my other videos, somebody posted a reply that was basically saying, like, the grave robber, um, yeah, the grave robber actually has, or sorry, the grave, grave robber's Poison Dart is actually really, really good, and I'm just an idiot for, like, not... I mean, this person didn't call me an idiot, but, I mean, basically, if this is true, I am an idiot. Um, and that, yeah, I, I need to be using it more. Obviously, this is not the dungeon for it, since everything has really, really high Blight Resist, but I think I will give it another shot. Um... I really hate to think that there's something that I am just completely oblivious to and I'm, I'm totally missing the mark about this attack. I probably should have just healed. Um, again, hindsight's 2020, but it's probably fine. Um, yeah, maybe I'm, I'm completely missing something here about how, uh, about how good that, that attack was. That person also pointed out that I was apparently using a moon ring, like in full light, so that might also explain why I felt the attack was somewhat lackluster. So again, as usual, the problem is with me and not with the class. I mean, that was the story with the Houndmaster, right? So it's entirely possible that I'm just completely missing something. and. I need to give that skill another go, probably when I'm in the ruins, or somewhere else where having, uh, yeah, having the ability to do, what do you think, yeah, yeah, or somewhere else where having the ability to do blight is pretty effective. Ooh. Alright, no problem. I am a bit worried she is level 2. And that's a lot of damage to be taking in a single round. So, why don't we just make sure that she's okay, and she will survive through the next turn, because, yeah, that's a lot of unanswered damage that she's going to be taking. Stun resist is quite high. That's not so much. And... All right, wonderful. Okay, first off, get that anti-venom. Heal yourself. I might actually want to remove this scroll for a short time to allow her to heal up again. I'm gonna use, oh, I need to be back a bit more to use this. Well, nothing to be done, I guess. It's a bit unfortunate, but yeah, now that it's stunned, we're probably fine. Lunge. Alright, wonderful. So, 
after the first lunge. Alright, so turn one, I'm going to have him defend. Turn actually yeah turn one I'm going to have him defend turn two after she leaps forward I'm gonna have him stress heal just a little bit to get that stress off okay and then we should be yeah we should be in a really good position after that um, was I saying something and I got sidetracked that happens a lot oh yeah uh, yeah apparently I'm just the scrubbiest dumbass ever and I had our grave robber doing um, or yeah wearing a, a moon ring in full light so again that might be a reason why I thought that um, that uh, poison dart skill was so bad like I was I was kind of underwhelmed with the damage for starters but I was also pretty disappointed with the um, okay Yeah, I was I was also pretty disappointed with just how um, how little damage the blight seemed to actually do. Uh, yeah, we might we might want to just remove that. Wonderful! Look at that, ninety four dodge. Um, not not bad at all. And crush. Okay. Now we do need to start thinking about how we're going to hit the back row here. But I think she needs to heal. So maybe we'll just mulch up these corpses and let them come to us. Am I, am I completely crazy here? Oh no. Thrown dagger. Of course. Of course. That's why we had the skill. Good lord. Um, I'm, <laughs> the wheels are falling off here, guys. I apparently um, doing two two episodes or two dungeon runs back to back just a little too much for uh, your old buddy Time Pants. I I don't have I don't have what it takes. It's just too mentally taxing, too arduous for me to to try and and do a couple runs back to back without recuperating. Um, so this was a recent change in uh, Corpse and Hound that now I believe those um, yeah those those uh, Fusiliers I think it is are able to or Riflemen are able to do their blanket fire from second rank and yikes so let's yeah let's just try and minimize the amount of calamity that these guys are able to to inflict upon us. Blackjack? I mean, if I get a hit, it's a good stun chance. I think we should do it. Yeah, this is good crowd control. That Actually, that Blackjack is coming around for me. Again, you know, people are saying, oh, you know, the Houndmaster is a really bad class because its damage is bad. Again, valid point. The damage is terrible. But that Blackjack... It's, yeah, it hits the front three, and guess who else has a skill that does that? Yep. So, yeah, you are getting the crowd control from uh, a Vestal, at the very least. And stuns that hit the front three, I mean, they're not uncommon, but they're certainly rarer than uh, the ability to do damage, right? I, I don't think I'm saying any, anything controversial here. Everybody has the ability to do damage, but the ability to mitigate damage with something like, yeah, with something like a stun, a little harder to come by. Now, stuns are probably not as good as damage in a lot of cases. I'll admit that. That's probably true. But, you know, if, if you don't have the ability to kill something right away, Case in point, if you don't have the ability to kill something right away, it is very nice to be able to uh, to be able to stun it and prevent it from attacking. Okay, we're gonna have to think about this. This is a big corpse that's 24 hit points once it's dead. So obviously, we do need to kill this thing down. 
but I think we want to try and get a stun to just buy us one turn. One turn. Ooh. This could get messy. Yeah, this this could get really messy. Wow. Okay, we we need to count our blessings. And now that it's in the front, we absolutely have to stun it to buy ourselves just one round where we can open up on it. Please, come on. Please. Please. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, boy. That's not good. That is not good. That's a bad, bad debuff. Um, gosh, what do we want to do? That is a bad debuff. He is, he is a principal damage dealer. Let's try and get... Get lucky with a stun. Nope. Okay. Oh man, this is this is bad. I'm sorry, my commentary has just completely fallen apart because I am truly I am well and truly worried now. Yep. That's bad. He's getting so lucky with these dodges. Wow. Oh, man. We got a round. We, we stole a round there. Actually, this might be the time. Holy shit. Hey, don't let anybody tell you the Houndmaster sucks. If you think the Houndmaster sucks, you suck. Alright? <laughs> Look at that. That was clutch. Yes, you know, we've done more damage with basically every other class, but... We had it when we needed it, man. And that's what counts. Oh my god. Um, Jesus, Houndmaster. That was fucking awesome. Yeah, that is... Wow. That dog treat is pretty good. And there was no reason for me to have sat on it for as long as I did. Because that was... That was really good. Okay. Man, that was that was the timeliest crit. Um, yeah. Wonderful. All right. So let's keep moving forward here. Ah, oh, yeah. Put her back in the back row. Man, like that was not the cleanest. That was not the prettiest fight. But that was definitely a memorable one. Um, I am very happy with how that worked out. Alright. Our stress is finally managed here. I'm feeling good about that. And so... Wow, these dodges. This is... Like, I didn't really think it was a terribly agile team, but... It's... I mean, it's hard to argue with results. Look at this. I think we actually guard dog on you. Oh man. Houndmaster. So fucking good. Like the promise of safety. How can you how can you argue with these results? It's you can't. It's too good. It is too good. Um, alright, let's see, can we actually, I don't think we have a reasonable chance of taking this thing out. 6 to 11, nah, I think we just stun, and then try and get lucky with a man-at-arms swing here. Not bad. And heal? I guess we do. This, <laughs> this has been... This has been the most harrowing dungeon. Like, man, that, like, the corpse change has been so dramatic. It has been so 
it has so greatly changed like how you have to approach a fight. Before with the Swinatar, it was very straightforward. It was very, very simple. You just, you know, take care of all the other riffraff, and then you have pretty much carte blanche to do whatever you want. You know, handle that fight however you want um, until, yeah, until you you get the kill. Um, not the case anymore. I mean, with a large corpse in the way, that is 24 additional damage that you have to deal on top of the kill. Which is... I mean, that is, that's a tall ask for some parties. So, yeah, having corpse removal skills, very necessary. Very necessary. And for that reason, I think even the Plague Doctor is kind of a welcome addition to a... Uh, to even a, uh, a party in the Warrens where you might not think that a, uh, a traditional blight dot uh, character would be all that useful. Damn, I was, I was hoping for another res uh, dodge there, but no big deal. Now I think we've got this handled. I'd be very shocked if the dungeon could really throw anything more at us that was more dangerous than what we've already kind of overcome. I wish this m would actually drive the enemy down into a negative protection score where you do additional damage, but that would probably be way too good. But I still wish that it were in the game. Let's see. Oh, we can actually stress heal. Full party? I did not know that. <laughs> I thought, yeah, I thought that was single target. A full party stress heal? Oh my god. Maybe we will never raise another jester. Like, who needs one? Holy shit. Full party stress heal. Don't let anybody tell you that the Houndmaster is a bad class. The Houndmaster has everything except damage, but there are tons of party compositions that have damage. Let's see. Yeah, ditch that. I wonder if they are going to add anything else in the game that does require you to spend more of these heirlooms, because as it stands right now, I mean, we had one additional heirloom expenditure with Corpse and Hound, and... That was, you know, that that was more than we had on hand. I think we needed an additional 120 busts, and we, I mean, we obviously didn't have that much. But, yeah, I, I wouldn't mind more changes to the town, although, where did this dodge come from, man? That's amazing. Um, yeah, although I, I don't even know what change one might make. I think we can actually get a kill. Wonderful. Um, yeah, I don't know what other changes you would make to the town to, uh, to, you know, kind of incentivize having, uh, yeah, having more heirlooms as the, uh, as the dungeons went along and you, once you, you build up your, uh, your town, you really don't need to uh, you really don't need to find heirlooms anymore but it's kind of sad that as a currency in the game they basically lose all meaning uh, that early because I mean we've we've played a ton more of the game once we have buffed up the uh, once we buffed up the town to its full size now one thing that they were talking about was the idea of making I think we can ditch that the idea of making, uh, what am I thinking here? Oh uh, yeah, the idea of making a uh, a random event occur, and some people said it would trigger when you retreated from a dungeon, and the enemies would basically pursue you back to town, where you would have to make a stand with an assortment of other characters, and if you 
if you won that skirmish, great, you kicked them back. But if you lost, some damage would be done to the town, and it would it would come in the form of losing your upgrades, and so you would have to rebuild them afterward. I think that's an awesome idea. I love that. Because as it stands right now, retreating is not that bad. I mean, we've retreated a lot, and we've never really had to pay too much more than a small yeah, a small fee for stress relief. And there's a common tactic right now, and I don't I don't think it's cheap or unbalanced just because it's very slow. But there's a common tactic right now where people will basically send a bunch of level zeros into a dungeon. Don't provide them any supplies or anything like that and then once they are basically on their last legs then you retreat out of the dungeon and you get to keep all their loot and it doesn't matter if they die or yeah it doesn't matter if three of them die and only one comes out because you're just going to dismiss that crazy one that they that they um yeah, the one crazy survivor anyway. So, yeah, like I said, I don't think it's unbalanced. I don't think it's broken. It's far too time-consuming for me to ever want to try and do it. But, nice. But it is in there, and, yeah, there's no, there's no cost, there's no penalty, there's no downside to doing that retreating, and... I mean, I guess it's still somewhat thematically appropriate, you know, you basically being this this brutal taskmaster who's sending these unfortunate heroes to their demise all for the sake of, you know, retrieving some lost treasure anyway. So, sure, it's on message, but at the same time, it does kind of, does kind of minimize the meaning of a dungeon run if if it doesn't matter if anyone lives or dies. Right? So, for me, that's that's what bothers me. It's not that it is... Yeah, it's not that it's broken or unbalanced or cheap or anything like that. It's that it makes the consequences of failure not matter. And so, yeah, if, if that were changed, I certainly wouldn't mind. I'd, I'd really like it, actually. I think it'd be very cool if enemies did pursue you back to town and you had to scrap together a handful of heroes at the level of the dungeon you just retreated from. And, you know, you might have to survive three waves of enemies right in a row so you don't have any time to heal. That would be pretty cool. I'd like to see that. That's That sounds like compelling, interesting gameplay. So, anyway, that wraps it up for this dungeon. We got two. We got a you got a double header here. So, not bad. A couple great runs. We got a bunch of experience on our Houndmaster there, and I'm feeling pretty good about what the future holds for us. So, let's see what do we get? Ruin Scrounger the Red Plague. Woof. Get it? Uh, we're going to have to take care of that. So I think we might send another party of champions into a dungeon later. Because, yeah, that's... We've got... <laughs> we, we actually accrued a good many diseases that we probably want to take care of. But I'm excited because we finally have a bounty hunter and a cultist combo again. So... It's going to be a really good next video, whatever happens. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.